Saudi Arabia's anti-corruption crackdown. Saudi authorities have now reportedly transferred Prince Al-Walid bin Talal and the remaining detainees from the Ritz-Carlton Hotel to a high-security prison. Nearly 60 detainees apparently removed, we're being told. We want to bring in an advisor to Prince Al-Walid bin Talal and chairman of Aris Holdings, Casey Green. Casey, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Good to be with you, Mark. And I know that you've advised mm -hmm. Prince Al-Walid on his investment decisions. You've also advised the French government. You have been very active in the Mideast and Europe in terms of consulting. What do you make of all of this and the kingdom's corruption sweep? Well... Um, I, I also advise a lot of U.S. companies, and I think that's very important to to understand what, what's happening in, in, in Saudi. When you you know take a step back of this crackdown and you see the global vision of the Crown Prince, uh, I think it was needed for, for Saudi Arabia to have you know such a young leader that take uh, the leadership of the country, and that and he's facing a lot of challenges right in Saudi right now, in military front, on the economic front, on the social front. And, and he has worked, you know, the last two years to, on a plan called Vision 2030 to, right. fight, to, to meet these challenges and to fix the issues that he has identified. And I think the corruption is a huge issue in Saudi Arabia. Um, it, has not, it has never been told so publicly, and I think it is a good thing that to, to, to identify it and to fight it. And I think the message to say that nobody is above the law it is a very important message to send to the Saudi people, to the Saudi ecosystem, and to foreign investors. Yes. Um, the concern that you know, most of the people have right now in the U.S., in France, <clears throat> is that this message should be, in Saudi Arabia, you have a rule of law where nobody is above. But the rule of law is very important to, to define. And, 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 to, and to present it, to, uh, to, to make the foreign investors secure about it. Prince, Prince Al-Walid has been imprisoned now for a long time, and there have been others that have been released. People are not asking the question, what did Prince Al-Walid do? It, it, did, did he support Muslim Brotherhood? Did he support terrorism? What yeah. did Prince Al-Wali do? You well, have been his advisor for a long time. What can you tell well, us? You know, you know I, I advised the former French uh, president and the government of the sovereign wealth fund, right? And when you took at the story between, between France and, and Prince Al-Wali, we wanted to build a, a Saudi-French investment fund at that time, and, and we were happy to identify you know, the best partners, and PIF was not as structured as it is today. So we identified Prince al as the best partner to to team up with, right? To, to, to the French government. To the French government. Right, you put that partnership together. Yeah. But, we're, but, but because Prince Al-Walid is a name that we all know, Western people have dealt with him. He's been a partner with Bill Gates. He's been a yeah. partner with other CEOs. Yeah. We want to know why he's still in jail and what he did. Well, I, I don't know. The only thing I, had, I can tell you is that we identified him because he was compatible with France. You know, uh, He was defending women rights. He was extremely uh, patriotic to Saudi Arabia. Uh, he was the largest Saudi investor in France and the largest investor in Saudi Arabia. But, but MBS is calling yeah. this a corruption crackdown. Yeah. Is that where, the way you see it, a corruption crackdown? I think so. Yes. I mean, I, mean I, I, I look at the, uh, uh, I listen to the Saudi public prosecutor and I follow the news, obviously, and I, and I, you know, I'm very careful about the other news around, which are most of them fake news. And I but is Alvalid saying, look, I'm, I'm not going to agree that I'm corrupt? So I'll stay in prison. Is that what he's saying? You know, I, th I, think, I think there is a process going on, and it's very difficult for anybody to, to, to comment on what's going on. And few people have been released and free and, and innocent. So, you know, I think we should let, you know, this, this pr process going on and respect the Saudi authorities. Have you spoken with Prince Al-Walid? Once, yeah. How's he doing? He's good. You know, he's good. He's, what did he say? You know, he, he doesn't say much. He's, he's just still very supporting to the Crown Prince. He has been extremely supportive to the Crown Prince publicly, privately, in the meetings with the president. Even two years ago, when the conference was not conference, it was deputy conference, he was still presenting him as the future of Saudi Arabia. Do you expect he's going to have to give up part of his fortune in order to get out? Well, you know, I don't know the charges. I don't know... Well, uh, that's what we're trying to figure out. What are the charges? That's right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the charges. I don't know what, what's the process, you know, behind, be, behind it. I think, I think uh, he's being treated very well. I think he has access to, to, uh, to kind of a defense. Well, we just reported so. that they moved them from the Ritz-Carlton to a high-security prison. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know about it. That's not official, and, you know, I, I can't comment on things and, and sources. That so you're not, not sure about that? No, no, no. Have you spoken with Prince Alwali's family? Uh, no, no, no. I, okay. I did not. I, know, I, I very much focus, you know, after this 
Saudi French investment fund, I very much focused my efforts on the U.S. relation. Uh, following the, the, the election of President Trump that I had the honor to meet uh, last, you know, last year in July, we agreed to, to, to bring more and more U.S. companies in, in Saudi Arabia. And the concern that the French has, the French have, the, the U.S. Uh, investors already, you know, also have it. And I think, I think it's very important for Saudi Arabia that I support, that I will, you know, uh, uh, that I will add value through all of these partners in the entertainment, Silicon Valley and Hollywood companies to, to show that there is a due process behind, behind all of this crackdown. And I think, you know, and I trust the conference, I've met him, he's a very smart, very wise uh, leader, and, and I think he's going to do it. And, and I think, you know, everybody should be relaxed on what's happening. Uh, you know, things are not out of control. It's, 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 it's really, you know, under, under control with all of the parties. Well, I think you make a good point because the Saudis want to take their oil company public. Yeah. The Saudi Aramco deal is going to be a big deal. London wants the deal. New York wants the deal. Hong Kong wants the deal. Short list for Saudi Aramco's uh, big public debut. Uh, what are the ramifications of that deal, given what's going on right now? Well, that's a good point. I think... I think this year would be a critical year for Saudi Arabia, yeah. 2018. I mean, we will have the IPO of Aramco, which is very exciting for most of the investors. Most yeah. of the stock actions are fighting around. Uh, well, you, I mean, it's part yeah. of this overall change. I mean, I interviewed the crown prince, his royal highness, uh, incoming president of uh, the incoming king, rather, of Saudi Arabia. I interviewed him in October, and yeah. he basically said, look, we're doing this corruption crackdown because we want to live like normal people. Here's what, here's what he said. We want to live a normal life, a life that translates our moderate religion, our good uh, customs. We coexist and live with the world and contribute to the development of our country and the world. This is something that there are uh, steps that have taken, uh, we have taken in the past that are clear. I believe that we will eradicate the rest of extremism very soon. So I don't think this is a real challenge because we represent the moderate teachings and principles of Islam. And we have uh, the right. The right is on our side. This was a huge statement, a huge statement that the uh, uh, incoming king of Saudi Arabia said. Yeah. Um, it, you, it was a historical statement. I was there with everybody. Everybody was there. I mean, it was a diverse uh, kind of <laughs> of the desert. Right. And, and it was a historical moment. And I think what, what the conference is doing and leading right now, it's maybe the most important thing in the Saudi modern history. It's a reverse of the Islamic revolution in 1979 in Iran. And instead of, you know, taking us 100 years ago, you know, it's taking us 100 years ahead. And I think that's very important for Saudi Arabia to have such, su such a leader and such a statement. What, what are your expectations for Prince al -Balib? You know, I know him. Um, I trust him. I think uh, his country has always comes first. Uh, 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 so I think he, he's going to lead that and he's going to negotiate with the, with, the, with the relevant people in the commission. Uh, he has been extremely supportive to the Crown Prince once again from two years ago till now, and I think he will continue to be. He's very loyal to his country, to his, to his family. And, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what will happen, but I only hope that the Crown Prince, everybody will capitalize and will leverage his out, outstanding network outside of Saudi to bring more value in Saudi. Casey, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for speaking out. Casey Green, an advisor to Prince Al-Walid and others.